Achieving success oftentimes requires that we let go. And letting go can be scary, it can be messy, and it can hurt. It can also bring us beauty and allow us to achieve a life that is completely unimaginable. That is exactly what we are talking about today with my guest, Angela Kane. We are going to talk with Angela about how she made a decision to let go of something that was hurting her on the inside and causing her to become unrecognizable on the outside. She talks about how this decision, although scary at first, allowed her to truly understand who she was on the inside and how it brought her a life that she never a dreamed imaginable. I'm Clara Capano, and this is Women Winning Their Way. Well, Angela, it is so good to have you here on the show. Welcome to the stage of Women Winning Their Way. How are you? Aw, thank you so much. I'm doing awesome. I'm so excited for today. I can't believe we're having this moment together. I'm so I grateful. Know. Yeah, we met a few years back and both of us have been on such a journey. And that's part of what we're talking about today. You know, the whole message I want today is about letting go. And in order for us to really step into who we were truly meant to be, sometimes that means we have to let go. We have to let go of a past identity that we've been holding on to. It could be letting go of a job. It could be letting go of habits or even people. And I know that this has been a big journey for you over especially the last year. So mm -hmm. if you wouldn't mind sharing, you know, what is it that you have let go of? And let's start talking about how this, how this mission of yours has really opened you up to a whole life that you never even thought of before. Yeah, it's true. It's been quite a journey for the last year. And I do my background is real estate sales and talk about letting go of identity. You know, this whole portrayal of women and boss babes and hustle culture. Um, it's really something that we all have to feel like we have to fit into when we get into this business, especially as females. And so I got really caught up in that. Right. And along with that, comes the networking and the socializing and the being on stage and being in the spotlight. And I'm just losing my breath right now talking about it. So imagine physically having to live that. And, you know, I knew at the core of my being, it wasn't who I was, but there is a lot of pressure to try to live up to that. So over the last year, I've removed alcohol from my life, which when you do that, you sit with feelings. You kind of have to look at yourself in the mirror and figure out who is it that you really are. Yeah, so that's been my journey, um, journey into alcohol-free living, because that's what really kind of fueled those, mm -hmm. you know, those, those characteristics and right. the feeling that at the end of the day, when things feel like it's too much, what do we do? Right? How do we yeah. numb out? How do we cope? So, yeah, that's a lot. But that's and I think we all have our our different ways of again numbing and coping. For some of us, it could just be um, scrolling on social media for hours. It could be eating. Again, it could be drinking or you know other things. It could be putting ourselves in situations that are not good for us with toxic relationships. <laughs> and you know, like you talked about, you know, being in sales and so many of the people that are watching this are in some kind of sales. And that's just what it is. You go and you socialize. Now, I would love to ask because one of the biggest things that happens when we let go of doing something is people don't know what to do with us at that point in time. And it doesn't just cause a lot of discomfort for us. It causes a lot of discomfort for others around us. So how did you, again, start to approach this, start to communicate it? And what were some of the things that you found with the others that were around you when you decided to make this change? So I'm very open and I use social media as a platform, one for accountability and two, because there has to be other people that feel the same way. And in order for me to hold myself accountable, sharing and helping others, that's kind of how I got the messaging out there. And then in turn started to attract those same like-minded individuals, but don't get me wrong. There were still people in my life that didn't want to invite me to certain events. They didn't want to include me in their circles. Maybe I gave off this feeling of I'm better. I'm not better, Clara. I'm better than who I was yesterday. But sometimes you get a little bit confident in your own skin. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, there, there is a little bit of uncomfortability on 
especially for myself in social settings too, because I always had that comfortable drink in my hand and I always thought I was so witty and so mm-hmm. funny and and like, don't get me wrong, it's not the real estate industry that drove me into this issue. It, it's just it's just not knowing how to cope or figuring out why you have to. There's lots mm-hmm. of successful people in sales that don't touch a drop right. of alcohol. For me, it was my outlet. So, um, and, and, and how do I deal with the differences? Well, sometimes I just have to remove myself from situations that don't feel safe or organic for me or... Sometimes I go to these functions and I, I just give myself a timeline because I know that I can only handle certain situations for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. But the most beautiful thing about this is, and I know you love this, is creating that tribe, that culture, those women yeah. around you, those men who really understand what your journey is. And they're like, hey, I'm on that bus too. You know, I have an extra ticket. Come along with me. And it, it just kind of like you naturally gravitate towards Right. Like minded individuals. And I know you know. And, you know, one of the things I really love that you brought up is this idea of not being better than others. It's it's all about a self reflection. And I see that so often where when we want to change something, um, again, you know, others take it as we think we're better than them. I know for one of my experiences is, again, the getting up early in the morning. And a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you think you're so much better. You have so much more to do. And it's like, No, I just operate that way because, again, there's certain times where I wish I could stay up until 10 or 11 o'clock at night and work. It's just not how I function. Are you too busy to work out? Well, the team at Busy Girl Boot Camp is going to challenge you that you are not too busy. And in just 30 minutes, you can get the energy, the workout, and the results you want. With years of helping busy women, Busy Girl Boot Camp knows what taking time for you is. And it's the best way for you to show up at your optimal level. And you can get these results without having to drastically change what you are doing or even giving up some of the fun stuff too. Learn how you can get the body and the energy you want and to do it on your terms in just 30 minutes. Check out the Busy Girl Bootcamp today and take control over your fitness and wellness goals. But I think, again, it's remembering that, you know, we're not trying to run a race against other people. This is all for us. And at the end of the day, whether people are on team Clara and Angela or off team Clara, Angela and Clara, it's it. This is our game. And we have to answer to ourselves and say, okay, I'm here to live the highest and and best for myself. Now, I want to talk about, again, how we refill it. Because again, for your journey, it was alcohol. Like I said, for others that are watching this, it may be something different. Um, Mm -hmm. I know when I've gone through, you know, a breakup with somebody, you've got to fill that time with something else. So, you know, what did you find has been successful for you? How do you fill that time and that void to allow you to get through the discomfort of the transitional phase? So I do a lot of yoga. I do that about four or five times a week. Uh, I do tons of meditation. I do a lot of journaling. Um, I, I really try to stay active in my mind and in my body because once you start moving, you know, you lose that reflection and you get distracted by other things. So that's a huge part of my routine to keep busy. I'm also, like you, very obsessed with empowering women right now and especially in this space. So I've been taking a lot of time to help other women get through the struggles and to get them digging deep. So that, as you know, because you coach others and you speak to others as well, that's very time consuming, but it's so rewarding and so fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And it helps me heal too. And it helps see where I have parts and things as well from hearing about their journeys. Um, And of course there's real estate and I'm a single mom and, and it's busy, right? But we have to be cautious when we're busy in life because then we're reducing focus on our things, right? Right. It's easy to get busy with work. It's easy to get busy with friends. Um, But yeah, a lot of spiritual things that I'm experiencing right now Mm -hmm. and, and looking inward and yeah, it's, but you know, that doesn't mean that those thoughts and those feelings aren't going to creep in. We're all human and we're all normal. Yeah. It's like, 
I, I just, I love what you're doing because you're just getting the word out there and the messaging, like you are not alone. You know, you well, don't have to ask what we want is, you know, I want this and we're both having technical issues today. I apologize yeah. for that. Um, okay. You know, that's what I want is I want, again, as a, as a global phenomenon, you know, everyone to know that, you know, it's okay and we're going to have these. Now, you mentioned some of the things like yoga. You mentioned, again, being in your tribe, but sometimes we have relapses. Sometimes, again, you know, we can be great for several months and then we're back in the toxicity. You know, um, for me, my thing a lot is food and I'll go like days, <laughs> weeks and I'll eat really well. And then all of a sudden I'll have a rough day and man, I want to go get that pint of ice cream or, okay, let's just be honest, that half gallon of ice cream, <laughs> um, you know, and the French fries and all that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes if you're leaving a relationship, it's so easy to say, oh, well, I'll just reach out and, and see how they're doing. Um, you know, or again, for you, you know, it's just one drink. It's just one night. So what do you do when you have those weak moments? Do you reflect back on the why? Do you, um, you know, have, again, like an anchor that you go to? Like, what is it that you do to remind you and give you the strength to push through? So I used to always say I'm doing this for my children, but I, I kind of almost cringe when I hear people say that because you have to do it for yourself in order to be able to serve your children. And when I get those thoughts, I do this and you can do this with any type of addiction or coping mechanism is I fast forward the tape. So if I make this decision, what does it look like when I fast forward? So for me, if I have that drink, I know that I fast forward to the next day where I'm extremely you know, I'm not useful to my clients. I'm not useful to my family. I might have said things I regret, texted things I didn't, you know, feel very proud of, mm -hmm. check the bank account statements, those types of things. And that keeps me in check because I have a lot of remember whens that aren't so yeah. great, Clara. And look, at, I wouldn't be here a year sober if drinking served me well. So mm -hmm. For me, it's, you know, it's just like shopping. If I buy that next article of clothing, how further am I going to go into debt? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And credit cards are already oh maxed out. I right. love this. What a simple concept. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that is so fantastic. So Thanks. hopefully everybody, you know, heard that fast forward. If I do this, let's fast forward an hour, a day, a week. Where am I going to be? You know, again, I might wake up feeling sick to my stomach, or I might not be able to get up early and do what I want to do, or I might make bad decisions or whatever it may be. I love that concept of just looking at where you'll be just a short time in the future to, again, really give you that checks and balances. That is so fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you know, and I'm sure that doing this was not just, well, maybe it was for you an overnight thing where you just woke up and you said, I'm done. But, um, you know, sort of what was the process that you went through, you know, because making these changes and making these commitments to let go is is hard and it can be really scary for people. So kind of what was the process that you went through to get you to a place where you could have the courage and the bravery to actually do it? It's... Yeah, that's a that's a tough one because it's progressive, right? So it's not like I just made a decision one night that this is going to be my last drink. There had been some pretty dark nights leading up to my decision and some, you know, we call those rock bottoms mm -hmm. and um I've I had some pretty difficult situations that I you know had to work through and and every time I assessed those situations, alcohol was always involved. Mm -hmm. The breakup you know, the, the mistrust, the, the fact that my children, you know, is mom this way or is she that way? You know, what mom are we getting today? And, and it's just those patterns and those repeat yeah. behaviors or behaviors. And it was just exhausting. And I just mm -hmm. said, you know what, the, the jig is up. Like, I can't do this anymore. And honestly, my last drink, like I felt like I was losing my best friend. It was really, really sad. Mm -hmm. Um, and I even took a photograph of myself and oh my goodness, I, it's, I'm un, unrecognizable, but it's just how much longer can we carry this out? You know, how yeah. much, more, how much more can we stuff down with food and with clothing yeah. and with drinking? And it's like that you just have to, you just have to make a decision and, yeah. and, and, I, and what unfolds afterwards? Well, yeah, like it's a lot of sitting in truths and feeling uncomfortable yeah. in your own skin because you only know yourself as this person. So Exactly. And that's, I think, why a lot of us do it is, again, it becomes that identity. And if I let yeah. go of this, 
then what am I? And I think, you know, that's a whole other, you know, item to do. And I like really how you talked about what is the common denominator? You know, when I had these moments that were moments that were not great moments, you know, was there a common denominator other than just us being a part of it? Yeah. You know, was there a it's common obvious. denominator? Yeah. Um, I kind of want to take us now to the other side because now it's been a year. And I know even just from a physical perspective, you have been documenting it from photos, you know, on, and I know that there has been a physical transformation. So one, talk about that, but what have been some other things that have happened to you that maybe you didn't expect? What was, a, what was it that life brought to you when you decided to let go? Maybe that you never really even anticipated could be part of this journey for you. Yeah, that's correct. And yeah, I mean, first of all, once you remove alcohol, you're losing all those calories, right? So you're, I lost about 35 pounds um, back in the gym, doing my yoga, getting my energy back. And, you know, I'm almost 50 and like, I feel like I have the energy of a 25 year old again, and it's awesome. Right. So, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of that is enthusiasm and passion. I'm just excited about life again. I get up early, like you do not as early as you, but you know, those, those birds chirping, you know, mm -hmm. what was the last time? You heard those when you were drinking till today. I know. Right. And then I it's strange because like I'm getting invited to speak with people like you. That never would have happened. Or I'm getting invited on panels in Toronto with top producing agents. And um I get to like not coach because I'm not a coach, but I get to work with women who are also struggling. And God knows I did not have the capacity to do that. So I helped to change. Mm -hmm. I think I'm changing some lives here and there with my story. I'm sure you are. And yeah. And then real estate. I mean, real estate's always going to be my gig because I love it so much. But within real estate, I'm now building a team and an organization. And like, you know, there's so many positive things when you mm -hmm. remove the one thing that makes you hurt on the inside the most, all the beautiful things come from that. And it's, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to get spiritual, but you know, I do believe that somebody is watching and helping guide our paths and giving us those little gifts when we show them that we can be better, better humans and, and better people. Yeah. And I love that. And, you know, we started off the conversation talking about how, you know, you would go to these social functions and, you know, that's what it was. And I think a lot of people just using this as an example would be like, well, is this going to hurt my business? Because now maybe I'm not going to those social events anymore. You know, am I going to, am I going to lose what brought me success? But to hear you talk now, it looks like you didn't lose success at all. And maybe actually you even amplified your level of success. So talk a little bit about this and how it has changed, maybe how you show up daily and how letting go actually brought you to a place where you had increased success. Yeah. And like, you're not performing at optimal levels, right? And when you're in these states, so you're not shining as bright as you think you are at these functions. You think you're really funny and entertaining because you're drinking and you're partying and you're hanging out with all these people. But at the end of the day, like, it's not really who you are. It's just a, a giant mask of protection and trying to have organic conversations with people that you don't even really want to be talking to half the time. Um, <laughs> And, and it's like, now you can go into these things and go, oh my gosh, that person's not drinking. That person's not drinking. This person's had a drink for the last two hours. It's only you that sits down and feels like you need to have many so that you can feel comfortable in the skin that you don't even recognize. So now you go in, you're bright eyed, you're bushy tailed, you're conversational, you're, you're, you're articulate, you're making mm -hmm. sense. You're, you're, you're actually funny sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, law of attraction, you attract the people to you that are meant to be there and having conversations with you and socializing with you. And then it's just, it's beautiful. Right. And it, and it hasn't hindered my business. And if honestly, if I think like, if you have a problem with food, you're not going to go to a place where, you know, you'll have no control, right? If I'm going to a function and it starts at seven and it ends at 2 AM, well, I'm going from seven till 10, I'm putting in the work and I'm going home. I mean, at first, you're not going to have the strength to be able to do that, depending who you are, but that's stuff that you can work up to. So, you know, it's, it's actually benefited my business where I thought the reverse, I'm the funny one. Oh, party and just here. Look at her. She's dancing. And yeah, it's not cute. 
it's not a cute look. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and what I love is something that you said a few minutes before, is you said, you know, when you decide to let go of anything that's causing the hurt inside you. So again, I know with your story, it was the alcohol, but I think that this pertains to anybody because yep. again, what is no longer serving you? What is hurting you? Again, it could be a relationship. It could be a past identity. It could be a habit that you have or other things. And so I think, again, it's not always just what we're talking about with the change in alcohol for you. There's so many things. And I know that there was, a, for me, again, like I mentioned, it, it's food for me. And I remember being in situations where I was the only single one. So I would go there and I would feel bad about myself so I would then leave and stop at the grocery store so I could buy, you know, the ice cream, you know, to eat, to numb the pain of feeling lonely, you know? So it's, again, I had to sit in that honesty because that's what was hurting me was feeling lonely. So mm -hmm. it's like, I had to look at, okay, well, how can we stop the loneliness? You know, how can we change this story? Because again, going and feeding my emotions weren't, weren't, wasn't fixing it, you know? So again, one was also being honest with people around me saying like, you know what, this isn't the best place for me to be right now because I leave there feeling bad. It's not on you. This is all about me. But again, you know, can we make it more of a dynamic where it's not seven couples all hugging, kissing and loving on each other yeah. and then just me sitting there by myself? You know, we've got to find a way to make it more inclusive. You know, can we do a game night where, again, we have different groups and it's not just couples against each other and Clara playing by herself? You know, are there other things that we can do? So I think, again, you know, acknowledging it, but sometimes you have to step up and you have to also ask others and tell others, you know, this is what I'm going to need from you to help support me. Yep. And it's true. And I love when you said the stories, because and when you're in those situations, the stories that you're making up in your mind, right? It's like, well, I'm here alone. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be here with me. Oh, look at all these people. They're so in love versus, wow, I'm so lucky that I get to come here and drive myself home and go to bed and have a bed to myself mm -hmm. and not bicker with my spouse later. And, you know, it's, it's, you, it's we're really good at glamorizing that story, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to get real with ourselves. They're just stories. Yeah. And I, and, and your food and someone else's coping is no different than alcohol. We're all just trying to feel better, right? But why? Why do we need to feel better? That's where the, that's where the real problem is, right? Why do I need a bottle of wine and a six pack of Stella so that I can numb out? How about I just deal with why I have to numb out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't have to do it, right? Yes. I'll make myself a salad mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's it's easier said than done. And I'm sorry that you have you had to go through that or that you're going through that because it's tough. It is tough. You no, know? yeah. and it and it's lonely and. And yeah, bad breakups. Oh my gosh. Like, mm -hmm. and again, it's people look at us, right? Wow, you're single. You got it all together. <laughs> you're so lucky. I'm like, Clara, I just want to. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> right? Sometimes I want to pick up the phone and say, can you just please grab milk on your way home? Exactly. So I, right? That partnership, that connection. Mm -hmm. And that will come when. We're but ready. I think at the end of it too, it's again, what is it that you're searching for? Like you said, what is it that this is trying to fill the emptiness of? And yeah. that's what you have to sit in and that's what you have to start addressing, you know, because what I had to learn is I had to be okay being lonely. And quite frankly, I actually kind of love being with myself right now. So it's like, I don't have to feel that way because sometimes it's like, oh, I get to actually go home and just have time with me and do what I want to do. And, you know, so I don't, so I, again, you rewrite the story yes. into a more empowering way. Um, so what I want to kind of do now is as we start to wrap this up, if you are sitting with someone and, you know, they are thinking about it, they, they know that something in them has to change. What would you incur them to encourage them to do in starting? Would you encourage them to maybe do the exercise of the fast forward? Would you maybe encourage them to do some journaling, to find someone like, what are some starting points that people can have if they're sort of looking to let go, but they, they, they're just at the beginning stages? Right. I would, I would encourage them to ask, you know, is your, is your life becoming unmanageable? right? Like, is this really affecting your day to day, your family, your life? And if you can say yes to that, then something needs to change. And then I know you love this too. Gratitude. Like seriously, sit down and journal all of the things that you're grateful for and that you're blessed to have. And, and on the tip of that is like the risk of potentially losing that, right? 
Like for me, the loss was so huge had I continued on the path that I was going, just making that list of things, my children, my business, my family, my home, my health, you know, and I'm not talking cars and houses and cottages and all that stuff, but the real things that you could risk losing should you continue this behavior, is it worth it? Right. Yeah. And, and it, because it's not about just you anymore, this self-care and self-reflection and looking inward, that needs to be done too. But there's people in your life that this is affecting, right? So for me, it was just realizing and really admitting my to self, admitting to myself that my life had become unmanageable. Two, what are the things that I'm going to be risking losing? Should I carry on this path and this behavior? And three, fast forward, both negative and positive. Okay, so if I continue on this path, what is it going to look like for me? Not so great in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Or the magic, right? Like the magic that can happen should you learn how to deal with the things on the inside instead of stuffing them down. Yeah. Ugh. You know, Angela, this has been such a beautiful conversation and I have been following your journey and you do inspire me. Um, I have actually let go of doing a lot of alcohol as well. I'm not going to say I, I'm having dry, but I'm having like okay. camp. Um, January, you know, um, like have a spicy margarita every once in a while, but again, I bring it back to again, I do a lot of the, you know, how am I going to feel tomorrow? And I don't do it on like days where I'm speaking the next day or where I really have to be on because I do want to be at my peak performance. So I do want you to know that you are inspiring and we're going to have all of your contact information in the show notes. But I know that there could be people out there who one may want to reach out to you because they want to work with you in real estate. So tell us what markets you work, but then also where can people reach out to you if they just want to learn more about you, maybe bring you in to speak, or maybe they're going through something similar and would love to have some help. Oh, I appreciate that so much. And I'm just so grateful to be with you. And yeah, you're just, you've been such a huge part of my life. Like in the background, I just love your energy and you're doing such great things. Thank you. So um, on Instagram, it's at Angela Kane Real Estate. And then I do have um, just starting a little uh, Instagram page, which is Sober is Sexy Canada. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and it's S-I-S. So Sober is Sexy Sis, right? So the girl thing. Um, so that if they're looking for any support in terms of that. Um, and then I live and work in Durham Region. Not seeing right. Canada. In Canada. I love it. Well, Angela, thank you again so much for being here. Thank love you. you. Love your life. And I know that there's just so much even more greatness. And you know what? You are sexy just the way you are. So <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Clara. All right, everyone. So what a great episode. So again, this is what we do here at Women Winning Their Way. We talk about the fact that you are in control of your destiny, your success, your life. So remember, when you want something, you got to go and get it. And it's all about making sure that you are creating success all on your terms. We'll see you next time. <laughs>